and welcome. Thank you for coming, Andrea. This is great. Thank you for having me. It's been a while. We've been trying to do this for I know for ages now. <laughs> but you know what? This it. is what happens when we have we are multi hyphenates and we do yeah. many many things. Yeah. But hello and welcome to Genius Tea Time with Andrea Jennings. And I would like to introduce you with the words that you sent me. Great. I'm, Thank you so much. Okay. So Andrea Jennings is M M U S. Am yes. I getting that right? All right. Yeah. It, is a master sought after of music. master of music. Perfect. Mm -hmm. As a sought after consultant, filmmaker, TV host, spoken word artist, author, disability and accessibility strategist, and actress, advocating for social justice through the lens of disability culture, film, music, and art. She is the founder of Shifting Creative Paradigms, leveling the playing field multimedia production company. She has a master's degree in music with an emphasis on the music business and entertainment industries from the Frost School of Music at the University of Miami. She is a Coro alumni and a chair, the chair of the Accessibility and Disability Commission for the city of Pasadena, which is where we both met originally. Yes. yes. And her interest in health equity has led her to co-author a report for the Atlantic OPRG on health equity to become a university guest lecturer and serve on various advisory boards. Um, advocating for equity in music, she is a co-founder and founding member of Recording Artists and Music Professionals with Disabilities, Ramped. Andrea's work has been featured in Park Avenue Armory, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Rutgers University's Jack Chen's exhibitions, and she's been recognized by Forbes Billboard magazine the Hollywood Reporter, and the New York Times. That's an impressive list of credits. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to tell us about Ramped? This is the organization I, we're benefiting today. I do. And, I, and I'm hoping that we can bring awareness and that people will go to their webpage and donate well after this airs. Um, Please but, do. Yes. So I'll tell you first, um, a wonderful woman named Lachi, uh, she is the current, found, she's the founder of RAMP. Uh, she's the current advisory board chair. She called me or she emailed me um, and maybe a few other individuals and started talking about this idea. She realized that we were all involved with music in some sort of a way. And she um, had talked to, you know, the recording um, um, academy and, and started to realize that there wasn't, you know, something like a, a music um, collective for, or um, a group of people that's really for disabled musicians and professional musicians. So we got together, we all kind of put our heads together. Me, I have a master's in music and I focus on music business. So I dealt with that part of it, representing people like myself. And we had other professional musicians and we just talked about what would be the best thing to do. And we launched RAMP and RAMP st stands for Recording Artists and Music Professionals with Disabilities. And it, what I love about RAMP, aside from all the great things I'm gonna tell you that they, that they do and how they have impacted the music world is the community. Mm -hmm. See, I now have three years later a family. I have a group of people that get me. I get them. I have somewhere that I can go to and say, you know, how, how can I best advocate for, you know, for this, or how can I best advocate for that? And they can do the same thing. And I think about a month ago, um, when we had the Grammys air, uh, Lachi came in town, um, cause she's from back East and many of the ramped um, members, pro members came in town and the executive board. And that was the first time that we had met each other because we did all this virtually. Can you imagine? Oh, so, wow. But yeah, the power of virtual. But I'll tell you what RAMP does. It's just a professional platform equipping the music and the live industry with disability inclusive tools, programming, and strategy. RAMP also connects the industry to a global directory of peer-vetted music sound creators and industry 
professionals with disabilities. Neurodivergence and other chronic or mental health conditions define source and hire, bringing competitive opportunities, visibility, and community to our professional members while offering disability inclusion to industry venue partners. The, the mission of, goal, of, of RAMPED is to amplify disability culture, promote equitable inclusion, and advocate for inclusive and accessible spaces in the music and live entertainment industry. And so one of the things that RAMPED has really done, it's just been great, it's really partnered with the Grammys. And they wanted to make music's biggest night more disability inclusive, and they were able to do that. Oh, good. Yeah, by helping to push for a visible ramp on the stage, ASL, audio description, and more at their ceremony. Um, they, we, we, we've been featured in New York Times, Billboard, and 2022 ramp was named a Zero Project honoree at the United Nations for its innovative solutions. Nice. And yes. In 2023, we were named Music Business Association Agent of Change. Very and, cool. Yes. Most, and uh, about re- time, I might yeah. add. <laughs> that part, right? And yeah. um, RAMP's members development initiatives are fiscally sponsored by the Stacey Park Melbourne Disability Justice Fund. Oh. And so how RAMP defines disability culture is disability culture as art, music, words, and creative contributions of people who identify as disabled. It's rooted in creativity, determination, and problem solving, as it is a vibrant counter response to society's marginalization and oppression and deserves to be celebrated. So this is why I love this group of people. And currently, I, I was on the inaugural executive committee Wow. Along with Galen Lee, Lachi, <laughs> and Stephen Letness. And um, Lachi, uh, Lachi is a, um, a global touring performer. She's a blind uh, touring performer. She has charted on the dance pop music recording list. She is an award-winning social entrepreneur and the Grammys board governor. So nice. Lachi's doing big things, yes. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. And Galen Lee is also very well known. Galen Lee. Oh, my God. And and just to stay on Lachi for a minute, she has been featured in Essence, Billboard, MTV, Good Morning America, um, Forbes. And she's, she's just a great person. And she uses storytelling to tell her story. I've had her. She's been on a panel that I've moderated before. And I just she's just blown me away. Galen. That's my friend. Galen, Aww. both of them, both of them are friends. But Galen, she's the co-founder. Um, I'm one of the co-founders. But Galen Lee is an internationally touring recording artist and speaker who won NPR's Music Tiny Desk contest in 2016. She's uh, a, so amazing, so amazing, both of them, and you. Thank you, thank oh. you. Since then, she has captivated audiences around the world with her um, original songs and traditional fiddle tunes. She's a member of the Grammy board as well. And Galen is a speaker and um, she has shared her perspective on PBS's News Hour. I encourage you to Google her work, um, the Moth Radio Hour, and she's done two widely viewed TED Talks. Um, and Stephen Letness was, he's, oh my goodness, he's a, a wonderful film composer. Oh. And he also has started a company um, where he actually helps fund music equipment for disabled individuals that are in you know, need of uh, or, or lack those funds to get that. So he's just doing great things. That Curren- is amazing. Yeah. Currently, our executive committee is Precious Perez. Um, she's our president. She's the singer. She's a singer and songwriter and educator. Love Precious. I love everyone there. Namel Norris. Um, Vice President, he's a musician, speaker, and advocate at Fora Will City. And our, we talked about our advisory board chair, which is Lachi. Chris Wiley, um, he's the treasurer. He's the award-winning singer, songwriter, rapper, and activist. And Aoti, Lisa, she's our secretary. She's a singer, songwriter, and playwright. She's got a wonderful concept of a play right now. And um, if you want to, you know, donate to Ramp, you can go to their website, which is ramp.org um, and always 
feel free to contact myself or anyone at RAMP so we can tell you more about what RAMP is doing in 2024. Excellent. And that is RAMPD.org? That is correct. Excellent. Oh, that's right. just amazing. And you have been doing quite a bit. So, <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> so much. Um, yes. what, what are some of the things that you've been working on lately that you're really excited about? I know we we're talking about authentic uh, representation and entertainment, and that's so much of what you do. But how is that showing up in your work lately? Of, well, apart from Ramped. I was just going to say, we could talk about that and Ramped all day long. because Of course. You know, I literally have had had people call me and say, Andrea, I need a musician. I need a musician. I'm like, go to the website. Our, the Ramped website has a database and you can literally contact them through, you know, directly. And so they have gotten jobs from that. So that was a, that was a big, um, you know, wonderful thing for me to be involved in after getting my degree in, in music and music business. So what I did after that and before, before Ramped, I started a production company called Shifting Creative Paradigms. Mm -hmm. And my goal, um, well, first let me back up. I was not born with a disability. I acquired my disability. And I grew up in a household with a mom who worked in um, uh, entertainment law. And mm -hmm. so I just, you know, assumed that, you know, everybody was adhering to the law. The law was done. I'm, you know, just kind of not really thinking. I had a car accident on my way to work. I work for a Fortune 500 company oh. and I was for ended on my way to work. And I, um, as a result, I had a spinal cord injury and something like a stroke and I had to learn everything all over. But you know what? Like, Laura, it really wasn't the disability. Oh, it rarely is. It's not, that's not the thing. It's how you'd have to deal with the world. Yep. It was the barriers. It was the barriers. And, you know, people will say, you know, ableist things or they have little microaggressions and they'll say things. And I'm thinking, you know, they're feeling so sorry for me because I'm in the wheelchair and I'm like, the wheelchair is freeing. Yeah, I, I was a wheelchair user. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it's the barriers after, you know, I was just so shocked and so hurt once I became disabled to learn that people were having, you know, had the, the law had not been adhered to. And I was like, okay, yeah. I'm disabled now and I, I just have to do something about it. And um, I understood at this point, I had some friends that, that were disabled, wanted to meet them places. And they were like, Andrea, that's really sweet that you want to go. This is 20 years ago. But you know that this place is not accessible. And I'm like, and? Like, we're going to go well, in there. And why it, isn't you know? it? <laughs> Let's right. talk about that. Exactly. So I, you know, that's how I started shifting creative paradigms by um, realizing, first of all, I had to listen to my friends who had been there before me and see what they had gone through, you know, and then address it, you know, and use the fact that I grew up in a household where my mother taught me to fight, you know, fight for my rights. She also taught me about um, the Harlem Renaissance and other entertainers who use their platforms even to risk their uh, careers in entertainment to fight for the rights. And, and especially being a black disabled woman living in an intersection of, of three things, you know? Um, and so when she told me that as a child and she, she told me about Sidney Poitier, Lena Horne, um, there's just so many people. I just, I was just amazed with that. And then when I uh, became disabled and I acquired my disability, I thought, you know, I, I want to be an actress. I was already, you know, acting in theater. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, I've always admired those people. This is the cross world where I say, do I just go into entertainment or do I go into entertainment knocking doors down? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and so, um, but yeah, that's what Shifting Creative Paradigms is about. Le it's shifting creative paradigms, leveling the playing field. And what we do is we're a diverse and inclusive um, production company. We focus on empowering Great. marginalized and under recognized and unrecognized individuals and through um, inclusive and diverse content for digital media, television, theater, news, and music. What makes us a little bit 
um, different and unique is that we're a social enterprise company. Not, we are not a nonprofit, nor are we mm. strictly, you know, for profit. But um, in the future, I um, am developing more programs. I have a, con- um, a cohort that I am launching soon where I want to mm. teach um, young people um, of all industries, not just entertainment. I want to teach them the basics of language. I want to teach them about authentic representation in, in every field. And I want to just, you know, kind of like pay it forward, the people who have helped me and the allies who have helped me. And I want to mention their names in rooms that maybe they wouldn't have had an opportunity. Um, and so I'm working on that now. Wow. That's impressive. Where do you want to offer the cohort? This cohort is going to be accessible. And so it will be online. Okay. Um, I, there's a few people that, um, that, you know, are interested and they live in different cities. They live in different states and some of them are working full time. So I'm trying to make it as accessible as possible but they have shown interest in wanting to make a change and they remind me of myself. And um, that's even, awesome. Yeah. Even though I have a disability, Laura, and I know you know this, we're not a monolith. And so I also want to create this cohort so that we can, um, they're going to take over my podcast. That's kind of a, a surprise, but I'm letting it out now. So we're going to have like a podcast takeover. And oh, wow. Gonna, yeah, they're going to tell their stories, their authentic story, because just like we're talking about authentic representation and entertainment, I can't speak for everyone. Of course not. Um, it, it's great. To, just like you're unmuting my voice right now, you're elevating my voice. You're letting me tell my own story. I want them to do the same thing. That's so good. So Thank what about you. the podcast? What is this podcast that you're doing? Thank you for asking. So shifting, it's called the Shifting Creative um, Paradigms Podcast. And what we do is we talk about, we have candid conversations about the entertainment industry. And I interview individuals and I talk to them. It doesn't, they don't necessarily have to be disabled, but I want to know what they're doing in their space to change. And then if they don't know what to do it's a it's a time to have a candid conversation um and talk about what i call the pink elephant in the room that sometimes people just don't want to talk about um and i find out that some very well-meaning people have good intentions but they just need to be guided so often the way honestly so are you putting together like best practices lists what are what are some of the things that you'd like to do to help with people The conversations are so important, of course. Definitely. You know, I just want to dig deeper into what they're doing at their company. Yeah. And and then, you know, make it something that we can apply to their situation Mm -hmm. um, and see if they're, it's almost kind of like having a live consultation, just a short snippet of it, you know, And, and I do a lot of consulting. Now we talked about this behind the scenes um, Mm -hmm. about, wait, how are you doing all of this, Andrea, right? And I I do want to say, before we delve deeper into disability representation, is that I advocate for um, self-care. So important. Yeah. I don't want to ever give this representation of that it's okay to um, stretch yourself too thin. Um, It's not okay to do that opportunities will be there. Your health is important, you know? And I think um, working in psychologically safe spaces, um, we also have to create those spaces for ourselves. Yeah. You know, Um, there's a spoon theory, right? Yes. And, you know, so we, after being in spaces for so long where we're always having to apologize for ourselves, ask for accommodations, You know, sometimes really just, you know, having, we don't have our voices heard. It can be very draining. So we do have to make sure that we, we say, I am enough. We, we have to use affirmation. So I, in no way, shape or form, encouraging overextending yourself. 
So while it does look like I do a lot, what I do to make sure that I practice self-care is that I do say no often. Um, I have to set boundaries and yeah. I tr try to work on maybe one or two things at a time. And I have to give myself extra time. I give myself an extra accommodation. Um, if I'm doing an event, I usually rest the day before and the day after. Smart. I, mm -hmm, I am prone to migraines mm -hmm. uh, after my car accident. And so I've learned how to try to set myself up for success. But, you know, with certain chronic pain, certain disabilities, um, you you <laughs> you don't know when it's going to happen. Right. And then um, no. you have things that aggravate it. And so I've learned, you know, to try to do my best to to rest. Yeah, it's so How important. about you? How about you? No. How do you use the the spoon theory? Spoon, it, yeah, yeah. And by the way, for people who are not familiar, the spoon theory is it. I don't remember who started this, but the idea is fairly basic. You have a limited amount of spoons in your drawer, right? You only have so many, and each thing that you do takes a certain amount. So if you have, say, real chronic pain, maybe something that doesn't seem like it might be hard for one person, and maybe that's like half a spoon for them, is five spoons for you to do the laundry. You know, so everybody's right. got different levels of what they have and what they don't. Um, I have traditionally been terrible at self-care. Oh. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> as somebody who has a lot of anxiety and a strong tendency to overwork. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that was fine until my adrenal drip glands crashed and um, oh. I had major thyroid issues. And my body said, on no uncertain terms, I can't do that anymore. So right. I have learned to take things one at a time a lot better. Right. And to yeah. set up the stronger boundaries. And that if I don't, I will have to schedule time to make sure I'm taking care of myself. Yes. And yeah. For other people, that sounds ridiculous, and they would never need to do that. And like I, I do. <laughs> this is how I do it. Everybody yeah. has to do it in the way that works best for them. But if yeah. I make sure I'm scheduling it, then yeah. I will do it. Yeah, because pe some people have more spoons than yep. others. That's you it. Know? And and we actually did a. Um, I'll send it to you ramped we produced a video about this about spoon theory oh that's awesome yeah we we actually talked about that but to get into authentic representation and entertainment um embracing uh diversity inclusion and accessibility i just want to you know thank everybody for listening thank you for joining us today thank you for having me first of all uh laura it, thank you I'm so much so glad you could do it thank you and um, it, it is, you know, we're going to delve into, you know, some topics and I want to start it out. It's not really funny, but I want to start it out just to kind of, well, we already kind of did break the ice, but I think it's really interesting in entertainment um, where we're talking about authentic representation and, and just even hiring more disabled actors. Um, some of the, the equipment that a director has to use, they put all of this equipment on a dolly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's wheels here. So when they thought of this, they were thinking of how can we make this director's job easier? How can we make it more successful? Ah, let's put some wheels on it. So it's really interesting to me that the entertainment industry is so closed when it comes to making spaces for disabled people because they've been doing it for years when it it's comes fascinating it's fascinating when it comes to um accommodations if you have an actor an actress that cannot run like the bionic woman what are they going to do they're going to use technology to speed speed it up right mm -hmm. or if they're going to get a um a stunt person and you know i've done some research and Typically, it's really not that expensive to include most accommodations. Yes. And when it comes to, you know, having onset accommodations, it's proven that really it's not this huge cost. 
I bet you it costs more to hire a stunt person, <laughs> you know, yeah. of course it, it does. Right. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not anti stunt person, but I think it's something that we, we, they already do. So yeah. we're creatives in the entertainment industry. We pride ourselves on creating new things and figuring things out and, Oh, let me figure this out. And let me figure this. That's all we do. We write scripts, you know, we, we create music. So it is very interesting to me that in this space, that it would be so difficult. And so I think it's uh, the stigma. It's, it's the, um, the misinformation and the assumption. So we'll talk about some harmful things in entertainment that, that, you know, that causes people to feel like they're not heard and they're not represented. So first of all, um, you know, media shapes a, a lot of our perceptions and beliefs. It, I'm not saying it shouldn't, it should, but it It, it, it does, of yeah. course it does. And, and it's vital that everyone sees themselves reflected in stories told on screens, big and small. It's very impactful. I remember as a, when I was a child, when I would, when I would see that, I would just smile, you know? And so um, a, a child's most impressionable years are the first seven years. And so imagine if even more children's shows showed, you know, uh, disabled individuals so that it just really would, it would help foster uh, a, sim a sense of in inclusivity. Um, and so even when you think of me as a Black woman with a disability, just Black representation in entertainment historically uh, we have been subjected to harmful stereotypes, limited opportunities in media. Yeah. We have, yeah, and we've seen a positive shift. However, there's always, um, you know, there's always, oh, well, we'll just tell their story. We know how it's told. And it's like, no, <laughs> you know, no. and it's so, yeah, we do have a rise of Black creators and storytellers. And, um, and so we are, um, you know, seeing a lot more of people just taking it into their own hands. But of course, we need funding. There's so many things we do need. And you were going to say something? Oh, no. I mean, I, uh, my co-curator, Anthony Tesler, and I had been talking about how in a lot of ways, the disability movement is sometimes 30 to 40 years behind many of the other civil rights movements. Yes. And so when you combine, you do the combination and there's always intersectionality when you're talking yes. about that. People fall oh. into more than one group. There's not a lot of disability representation, period. No, no, not at all. You're so right. And um, it, it's really unfortunate. And especially, like I said, when you're someone like me who's black, disabled and a woman, you know, there's layers of the things that I feel. And so, um, so we know we need it and it's very harmful when when we have other people representing us. So it, it would be the same way you wouldn't want somebody to, to, you know, sadly we had to go through people putting on, you know, blackface, you know. Um, yeah. And so when you have, when you hire someone who is not disabled uh, and, and, and instead of, you know, reaching out and, and hiring someone who is disabled, it's very similar to that analogy. So many years, well, not many years ago, about five or six years ago, Casting Society of America put together um, a big casting call where they invited a lot of disabled individuals. And I was one of them. And I was one of the people that, you know, fought for that. Um, Eileen Greba fought for it. Ta Tatiana Lee fought for it. There were so many people. Um, Paul Ford. Oh, my God. There's so many people. We've got some great people who's fighting this fight right now, like Nick Novicki and Terry Hartman Squire. But, you know, that was very helpful because now no one can say, I don't know where they are. You know what I mean? <laughs> so they can't say that anymore. So we, you know, we got a lot of people and there's a lot of programming. There's a lot of, um, you know, people being invited to program scholarships, um, different, uh, different just, uh, um, Oh, what do you call that? Uh, grants available. So, you know, we are getting better, but there's just so many things that need to be done. And I say, you know, it starts with me being an actress. I'm an actress, by the way. I know you're like, how do you do all these things? But I'm an actress. So imagine I get a call, first of all, which is far and few in between disabled individuals and unrecognized individuals, Black women. We don't get as many calls as everyone else does. So what happens is we don't get to practice auditions. 
when mm. you don't get to mm. practice that you're just not as you know on top of it I I even if I don't get a role just the experience of practicing and reading for that script and then being in the room maybe if I almost got it with the casting directors um, at the last calls you know though that's very helpful and so typically that now imagine I want to go take headshots and I'm in a, and I'm a wheelchair user and this has even happened to me as a leg brace user and a cane user. And I can't get into the photography studio because it's not accessible. Mm -hmm. Or I can't get into the casting call. Or they may want me to do um, uh, a self-tape. However, depending on the person's disability, that's by the time they set everything up, they probably don't have the energy if they can, can even set it up. So there's so many barriers just for someone trying to be in the entertainment industry. So finally, someone does all of this just so that no one can call them and then just pass it up and give it to someone who's not disabled. You know, disabled individuals aren't looking for charity. We are opinion leaders. We are educated. We take, you know, we're just like anyone else. So we're not even saying, oh, I feel sorry for me, give me this opportunity. We're, we're talking about equity, which is what I was just talking about. Yeah. We, we need equitable solutions. We need people mentioning our names in rooms that we would not be in. We need people like showrunners and writers, if you're listening, to look at that. Hello. <laughs> yeah, hello. <laughs> look at the scripts that you're writing. If, if you're writing a script right now, I know you probably weren't even thinking about this. It's probably like an aha moment for you right now. What are some characters? What can you change around? Or maybe not even change around. What can you just realize that, oh my goodness, this can definitely, this role is for anyone. Why easy. does it have to be that? Why, you know, easy. And, and, and then what, and then the next step for that, you know, person is like, well, then how do where do, where do I go? Well, you, you, you're listening right now. You can call, you can call Laura, you can call me. I can get you to the right people. There are organizations like mine. There's organizations like Ramped. There's Laura that can get you to the right people. And we finally do have a lot of people, a lot of casting agents that are now understanding. So now we talked about the why. We're going to talk yeah. about like language, right? The mm -hmm. language is really important. Um, you may not think it's that important, but even if you're writing, hire a consultant. If you're a showrunner, if you're doing a short film, a feature film, a doc, look into consultants like myself or different companies that can help you with how to um, make sure that the set is accessible. Make sure that the trailer, the dressing rooms, because everyone's thinking, oh, I know it's ADA compliant. I know what that is. But how about we go above and beyond? You know, how about we find out what learn about the culture? You know, so the best thing is we have something called accessibility coordinators and they're trained on making sure that that set is accessible. And it's something that we should not just hire them even as consultants. How about just having them staff? You know what I mean? How no. about just making a commitment to have accessibility coordinators in studios, having them available? And so I think that's a game changer right there. So I'll give you an example of something that I said, I always use myself as an example. I wasn't born with a disability. So when I first was disabled, I thought, oh, this word... Uh, differently able is kind of cute. Now I will say this: everyone can choose how they want to identify. I don't want to, of course, say that this. If someone uses that, that's fine. But I can tell you, I had to think about why am I saying differently able instead of disabled, and I had to be real with myself, Laura. I said it because I was avoiding the word disabled, and if mm. I keep, yeah, if I keep avoiding it just to please someone else. How many yeah. words am I going to go through, you know? Yeah. Why do I want to use a cutesy word? I'm a grown woman, number one. Yes, <laughs> you do. I do, I do, right. I don't want to, you know, people to patronize me. So, you know, finally, I had to be real with myself. So that's why I don't use differently able. Something else is 
there's uh, three, there's models. There's a social model, there's a charitable model, there is um, a medical model. And yep. a charitable model goes off of, you know, oh, you know, let's, we feel so sorry for this person. The harm. They're for, there, dear. <laughs> you're right. The, the the harm, the the why that is not okay is one day when Andrea isn't cute and, oh, I feel so sorry for her. When she's just like everyone else and she just has a bad day or maybe it's not even a bad day. If I don't fit this trope of cute little Andrea, then you know what I mean? What where What, what is that doing now? So the charitable model doesn't really work for me. The medical model has its place, but it, it, you know, most of the time it, it has this thing where I need to be fixed. Now, if I'm going to the doctor and I want to say, you know, I'm having, uh, you know, this issue, I may describe it that way, but typically in media, if I say I'm suffering from this, you know what I mean? That's, that's the vibe I give, give off. Mm. And so I, I've learned not to say that myself. You know, and it's just little words like that. People will say on journalism, I see articles written and uh, they'll say, which is one another reason why I want to have my cohort, because I want to teach people, you know, when they're starting out in their careers to know these things. But one harmful thing is wheelchair bound, you know. Um, Are you tied so, to the chair? No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you and that's know, different. That's a different yeah. theme. Because you, you have such beautiful art you know, with the uh, opulent mobility. So Thanks. you get the, the wheelchair pride. Uh, so my wheelchair, like I said, I, I, it, that wasn't the issue, you know, it was the barrier. So I think, you know, you get the picture. It's, you know, when you have harmful um, tropes and stereotypes written in scripts, you know, yeah. when people are um, not hiring disabled individuals because of the assumptions, uh, the cost, um, you know, any assumption that they have, uh, and not hiring consultants just as they would, or not making accommodations like we proved earlier that they already do. Yeah. And again, Over time. This is, yeah. And this is not let's get on the entertainment day. It's more so saying, I don't think you realize you're doing a lot of assumptions. And and when has that ever helped anybody? It's ask. Yes. You know, get to and learn our culture. Yeah. It's a really straightforward thing. And also, one of the things that a lot of people don't necessarily recognize, because people do have stigma and shame attached to disability, they don't always want to call themselves that. But I'm willing to bet we all know a lot more disabled people than we might think. And so... I, I love that. I love what you're saying, because one-fourth of Americans uh, have or identify with some sort of disability and... Uh, globally, I believe it's one in six. Yeah. And so, you know, most likely, you know, you're either going to know someone who's disabled or you know someone, but you, they haven't, like you said, divulged it. And or they're not thinking other... about themselves in that way. Yes. Yeah, I've been yeah. guilty of that personally. Yeah. yeah. Um, just in the. Of course, there are degrees, like anything. Like there are degrees of which you are more and less, you know, there's more and less bias about that, that you, people are more prejudiced against, that you say don't get jobs or whatever else. But um, most of the accommodations help a lot of people in the same way that curb cuts on the sidewalk help a lot of people. You know, if you use a stroller, you're using curb cuts. If you use a wheelchair, you're using curb cuts, but also roller skates. So people benefit from this all over, everywhere. Absolutely. You know, and by not, um, you know, asking or hiring, you know, um, accessibility coordinators, what happens is you reinforce the stereotypes that are already negative when you hire non disabled actors. Um, also, there's mi misrepresentation of experiences. You are a storyteller and a creative, and, and we're all t thinking about character development. I would really think you'd want to get someone that really would want to tell their story authentically, you know? Um, and non-disabled actors, you know, they may not under fully, fully understand um, 
accurately how to depict it. They won't, you know, I, I'm disabled and I'm not going to understand someone else's disability. So yep. I want to let them tell that. But you deny opportunities to disabled actors. Um, you undermine, you know, uh, credibility, authenticity. Um, you you actually are a barrier in in having you know, giving people who are unrecognized a chance to change the narrative and tell their narrative of the story. Um, now let's talk about some solutions. We talked about a few of them. We talked about, you know, hiring coordinators. Um, mm -hmm. But there's, you know, there's things uh, maybe, now we talked about, you know, equitable solutions, right? There's been a lot of gaps that privileged people have had that, you um, people with disabilities haven't, or, you know, black actors have not. And so it's just, you know, figuring out how can we fill those gaps? How can we um, make sure that they're being heard and, and, and seen? Um, and so I say, you know, hire people um, in high spaces, the showrunners, um, yeah. the executives, the, you know, in, in every industry, by the way, because we talked about this, the things that I do, people go, how do you do that, right? Here's the thing. First of all, I could do accessibility in my sleep because I'm disabled, you know, but I can't speak for everyone. So that's the thing. I have to allow others to speak up for themselves. I can't speak on every disability, but no. I noticed from a bird's eye view, Laura, it's always the same thing. It's integrating accessibility throughout and it's making sure that disabled people or um, black people or whatever the unrecognized group is, our marginalized group is somewhere at the top. They have to have a voice and they have to be given um, not just a title, right? Yeah. Not just a checklist, not just this performative act of, okay, she's here, but now that this person <laughs> is at the top, he or she, they feel siloed, you know? And so it's not just about, um, you know, giving somebody these parts. It's about being authentic. And it's about like pulling someone like myself. There's other companies, there's other people. And, and, and you know, sending this out for the long haul, this is not a one and done thing. This conversation can go on forever. Yeah. But I just really wanted to tell people some of the harmful things and how we're missing out. Like I said, this is this this is not a charitable thing we're doing. No. I always say, how do you know that you've got the best talent, the best actor, the best employee when you haven't engaged one fourth of a whole, you know, <laughs> demographic? You don't There's know. a lot of people out there you're not even touching. Yeah. Exactly. And and just like with myself. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have some opportunities and that's why I want to, like I said, pay it forward. But even with myself, it took me many years once the, the gap started to, you know, close, which it still hasn't completely, No. but it still takes many years for me, even though I have a degree to catch up because of equitable, you know, differences and all the disparities that we have. And so I encourage people, I encourage um, great companies to, to, to develop programs, but I have interviewed people um, who have gone through some programs many years ago. So I hope that there's a better change. Um, yes. I have interviewed people and they've gone through some of these programs then to never hear from the company again. Ooh. And so we mm. don't, we don't want to do that. We want no. to, we want to have some measuring tools. We want to follow up. We want to make sure that these programs continue on and on because otherwise what it does is somewhat one person told me it made them feel like they were called out as, as a newbie. And so it did actually more harm than it mm. did good, you know? So when you're developing programs, call in disabled individuals to make sure that even the programs are appropriate. Make sure that you develop sustainable programs so that they can continue and that we're not further marginalizing um, groups. So is there anything that you wanted to know as we wind up? 
wind oh. down or <laughs> <laughs> wind down wind sideways wind <laughs> i would like to i'd love to say you have a new project on the horizon are okay. you able to talk about that <laughs> oh yes yeah so now this is really strange um working in the entertainment space dealing like we talked about and thank you for giving me the space to talk about just being real and just talk about hey i'm not always feeling well all the time right yeah yeah but I can still be dependent on, I just have to make sure, like we said, we have a, we have a, um, a, a way to take care of ourselves when we feel, you know, overwhelmed or our body is, um, we, we've run out of spoons basically. Yep. But funny that you would think that this next um, project that I'm going to tell you about would have come through the circles that I'm telling you about. But no, I, I, you okay. know, I'm a commissioner. I'm very proud to be a commissioner. And I, I encourage people to get more involved in your local civic, you know, leadership, find out what you can do locally. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to get too much into that, but you know, it's not so much political, like this is more community work. I'm more like community based community work. Um, so I did that. I was told that they, you know, someone told me I, they thought I would be good. And, and guess who that person was? It was Martin. <laughs> it was Martin and Robert Gorski, which is no longer with us. He yeah, I'm so it. sorry. Yeah, he was a mentor to me. And so I wound up really liking, um, liking this, even though I was more of a creative. And um, I went around to different departments in the city and I found out that, my God, everybody's doing a really great job. They actually really... And I'm not just saying that, like, I when you speak to each department and you ask what they're doing with accessibility, you're just like, wow. And then when you talk to people, um, even if they still are getting a grasp on it, they're very passionate about learning Good. and they, they already have programs and they follow it through. So I'm really proud of um, the city of Pasadena. And I, what I found out is that sometimes the message didn't get through, like, you know, they not everybody was working always together. So mm -hmm. I was like, we, we need to kind of do something where we get it out in the media, you know? And one thing led to another thing led to another thing. The next thing I know is I have my own show, pop culture show called Access for All, Ac Integrating Accessibility. Congratulations. And That's thank awesome. You. Yes, thank you. And it will be streaming on um, platforms, um, such as, um, gosh, I think it's, uh, Amazon, you know, Apple, um, I, I will have to send you out a message, but uh, it'll also be, uh, on YouTube. So to have a, a TV show streaming, I'm also one of the producers. I have a great, um, EP over at the station and I have a great showrunner and the showrunner is, she, it's a black woman. Awesome. So as we're talking about, <laughs> uh, you know, representation in entertainment and, and the people in charge. Yeah. And exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's Pasadena media and they actually elevated my voice. And so I'm going to use this show to do the same. I'm going to oh. use this show. Yeah. Making sure that I'm, you know, paying it forward, like I said, and letting people tell their own stories. That's amazing. Do you have people planned already for your guests? I do, you know, this is, this, All right, is, I, I don't want to, I want to like, I know, spo no spoilers, but you know, no, we're, we're going to be talking about anything from design, right? Cause it's pop culture. Okay. My, my motto is accessibility is very serious and it's compliance and we're talking about access. Means, so it can be serious, right? But it's a lifestyle, Yeah. you know, it's a lifestyle and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. The baby boomers are aging and, um, you know, so they have very similar needs as the disabled community. Yes. Um, and we have aging in place. We'll be talking about aging in place. Um, cool. In, in, on the show, we're going to have entertainers. We're going to have um, people who work with people with disabilities. We're going to have just, we're going to talk about what we're mm. talking about. Just letting people authentically represent themselves. Perfect. It's so important. It really is. And, and to, to come around full circle and to, to be given that opportunity in a space where I was least looking for 
<laughs> but that is great. It is. It is. I'm. I'm very happy, and I will say um, that I, I'm hoping that more stations will will do this. I'm hoping that um, we have a lot of great people out there. We have a lot of great creators. We have a lot of great people doing great things um, in the disability culture space. Yes. Um, and I just want to see those people, um, those stories told. I love to see more of those people in executive positions. And like I said, showrunners and that would be amazing. And directors. Yes. So do you have, by the way, some names of people that you think people should be following who we should be keeping up on in the entertainment eye as great um, representation? I uh, there's so many I know that's the thing there's actually quite a lot lately I've been following a ton of people on Instagram but right. I, I am not sure who you are following right well I will say um I I really like some of the things uh, really everybody's doing a great job Nick Novicki has um he's done a really great job with the disability Easter sorry Easter Seals Disability Film Festival oh um, which so is great it's really great because he's doing exactly what I'm saying, you know, that I'm doing is just giving people opportunities to represent themselves. He's doing it in such a big way. You know, he partners with major studios and he's getting people, you know, to actually feel more comfortable to be in these spaces. Um, Terry Hartman Squire is, she has a company called Lights Camera Access. And so she's always working behind the scenes, creating opportunities for um, different, you know, uh, different causes, different disabilities. Just, she has a wonderful cohort. Um, there's Stephanie Thomas. Stephanie Thomas is a voiceover artist and she is a disability fashion stylist. Yes. And, you know, what she does is so important because for so long we had to kind of, me, I was a wheelchair user and, and I still, uh, believe it or not, I need clothes for my disability. Um, Sometimes it's hard for me to button things or zip things. I don't always have the dexterity for it. Um, And I wear leg braces. So what she does for the entertainment industry uh, and media in general is just amazing. She's going to be one of my guests. Um, Yay. Amazing person. Yeah. There's, uh, we talked about everybody around. Uh, There's Tiffany um, Yu. Yes, she she is a great. She has a company called Diversibility. She's she's wonderful at making sure that companies understand the need. There's so many people there. There is oh my gosh. There's there's I, what what I'll do is I'll make a list and you can post it one day. There's that would just, be amazing. I'm <laughs> I'm filling. By the way, I'm filling the chat as quickly as I can with all yeah. of this, and I will have uh, this down as a list that we can um, share with other people about yeah. all all of the wonderful people we've mentioned. Definitely, because there's real so abilities. Many. Yeah, there's some. I'm starting to think there's a real abilities. Yes. Um, um, the city of LA puts and Stephen. Um, Stephen's going to come in. I just blanked out. But Stephen, the director of um, Real Abilities um, LA, they, that will be coming in May. And so that's really great, you know. And then there, um, there's so many people it's that amazing. are doing things. Yeah, it's about just staying connected. Um, Keith Jones, uh, he's a, he is an Emmy winner. And he did, um, he helped write a song for a movie called Rising Phoenix. And so he's really good about talking about the intersection and disability um, justice. And so, again, yeah. What are some people that you know? I I was actually going to mention some of the things (laughs) that you had mentioned. But I was also... um, Imani Barbarin, uh, Crutches in Space, uh, who is terrific. Yes. Um, Marisa Hamamoto, who's been doing Infinite yes. Flow Dance and yes. does really lovely um, intersectional work with dance, with ASL, with people of a wide variety of different abilities. And I, I know there are going to be 20 more that I'm going to come up with <laughs> later on. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And Steve and David Simon, that's the person. Tatiana uh, Lee, she, she's with Apple uh, TV Plus. She's you know, you know, doing a lot there. Ella 
uh, Eileen Grubba. She's, um, I believe she's um, a SAG uh, board member. She's doing a lot behind the scenes. There, mm. there, the list goes on. And that's it's why amazing. we need more TV shows where we're actually, um, you know, show, spotlighting these individuals. Because I, I could go on and on. Andrea Lavelle, So many people. Ke- Keely, uh, Keely, you know, well, so there's just so many people. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I know I'm like, I'm trying to find, I'm not going to be able to fill them up in the next two minutes. Oh, you're, you're in there filling them up. No, let's I'm trying, here. I'm trying in the chat, but uh, at here. any rate, if people want to get in touch, I am always happy to give you a list of a ton of people to follow who just will be very exciting and who are great speakers, great entertainers and wonderful advocates. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And, it's all over and it's please come ask us join us we there are so many people that you can work with yeah there oh my goodness there's so many people so yeah and i and i think the point is if you and i are running out of people like literally like I, yeah. I just thought of you know tree there's so many just so many different people that means that the assumption that there aren't enough Oh, oh no <laughs> oh no no there's so <laughs> many people <laughs> like you and we're talking you, about talented people you know talented amazing people who will tell their stories better than anybody else can it's and so important i think that it's the big thing that mo- for a lot of people it's like look would you want someone else telling your story or do you want yeah. you <laughs> hello you know and I often tell people when it even comes to making media accessible, right? Yeah. Most people in media, especially when we get to, you know, higher budget things, they, they it, actually anyone in media, they want things to be very professional looking, right? So imagine you've got everything else professional and then you just kind of was like, well, I'll just do the bare minimum <laughs> for accessibility, right? Yeah. And you just flatlined on that one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's like, like, why would you do everything else up to par and then you, you know, every, you know, accessibility you, just falls down. Yeah. You know, so you, this no, is a great say? way to work with. Yes. Yeah. Oh. I think that this is why um, people like you and I are in this space where we're doing shows, where we're teaching people. Because I, I, I laugh and I tell jokes, but honestly, I don't like to shame people. No. I, I, I do want to tell people I get it, but let's move forward. Let's let's get you educated. I don't know everything, right? Let's learn together. There's so many great opportunities, and um, that is why we're doing this. <laughs> yes, and Thank it's so much so better much. when we're in community. Oh my goodness, definitely. Definitely. And it's, it's really helpful, especially when it comes, that's one way you can save spoons yes. by creating um, a team, teamwork, you know? So I want to thank you so much for having me and thank you for letting me be off camera today. Of course, uh, not a problem. This, by the way, is a great accommodation that one can make or um, yes. an access need. I don't yes. always like accommodation as a term. Yeah. It's you access know. need is, is, best practice and I just to let everyone know I don't have to say anything but sometimes my eyes get sensitive and so I I got all pretty I had a little lipstick on and everything but you know I felt and I tell people this all the time when you can feel psychologically safe okay look I'm not feeling good today my eyes hurt or um I have a migraine or whatever and that person gives you that access need and their attitude is, Andrea, whatever we could do to make you feel like make you successful, what can we do to help you be successful? This is the perfect example, Laura. Thank you. I'm so glad. And it's also it's a, a straightforward thing. You have a lovely headshot. We don't need it. It's OK. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I think for people they think that access needs are really necessarily difficult most of the time they're not what you need to do is ask and that's yeah and And i I don't know i don't know know. what your access needs are i need to ask them exactly and and hopefully we will get everything captioned so that it is accessible for everyone um i typically do like to be on camera just for 
for people, um, especially if we have an ASL interpreter. But today I was experiencing um, what they call like an aura from, from, from a migraine. So I thought, Oof. yeah. <laughs> and and it, I think we, we caught it in time. So thank you so much for that. And again, look, we, we were able to finish the show. There we good. And mm -hmm. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much again. And thanks to everybody watching. Thank you.